Arsenal must start to dream. We're in mid-March and the double is within their hands. Of course, it's unlikely. Of course, it's incredibly difficult. Of course, it probably won't happen. But if you are an Arsenal fan, I think you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your soul. You should be dreaming of winning a European and domestic double. Arsenal have knocked Porto out of the European Cup. They have won a knockout tie in the Champions League. It's something that they desperately needed to do. It's something that has been such a long time coming. The last goal that was scored in a knockout tie by an Arsenal player was scored by Theo Walcott. Prior to that Trossard goal, the last goal that was scored in that circumstance was scored by Theo Walcott. Think about how many players have played for Arsenal in between and haven't come close to doing what Leandro Trossard did. This is a moment for Arsenal. It feels like it's a sea change. It feels like it's a seminal moment in terms of who they are. It has been so long coming, but they can do more. They are playing really well. And we've learned a lot about them in their last two games. That result against Brentford, in the context, in terms of what it meant, in terms of how it was achieved, was huge. You then juxtapose that with what happened at the Emirates last night. It really is moving in the right direction for Arsenal because knocking Porto out of the Champions League is symbolic. It's big. Of course, there are better teams left in the Champions League than Porto. But Porto are a really good team and it's a difficult tie for many reasons. They're a good side. They're difficult to play against. They have a good manager. They have a lot of experience in the side. They love possession. They're very aggressive. They love to time waste. They're provocative. They're determined. They stick to their shape. They're incredibly well organised. And Arsenal needed to find a way to overcome them. Like, things have been quite easy for Arsenal this year. They've been dazzling. They've blown teams away. It's easy when you win 6-0. I know that sounds ridiculous. But it's far easier to win 6-0 against West Ham United than it is to win 1-0 against Porto in the circumstances. 1-0 wins are more difficult to come by. When everything is going well, when everything you hit ends up in the back of the net, when you have five different players from your club scoring goals and an own goal, six different goal scorers, everything is going well. The Midas touch is in full effect from Mikel Arteta. But that isn't when managers manage. That isn't when managers earn their money. That isn't when captains lead. That isn't when the cream rises to the top. That isn't when... Players become gladiatorial. That isn't when the Emirates turns into an amphitheatre. Last night it did. And I just think that Arsenal fans should be a little bit more ambitious. A little bit more full of life. Just even if you don't think it's going to happen, believe it's going to happen. Just believe. Just dream. Like think about how calm Arsenal were all through the night. Maybe not the fans. Look, I wasn't in the stadium. I can't, I can't comment on that. Maybe there was trepidation of fear amongst the support. But I thought Mikel Arteta was incredibly calm throughout. At no point did he even dream of being pressured into substitutions that he didn't think was right to make. You look at how calm and collected Arsenal were during that penalty shootout. Like they were totally composed throughout, weren't they? They knew that they had done their due diligence. They knew that they had prepared adequately. And they knew that they had the skill that they needed despite the pressure. Everybody was calm. There was no desperate manoeuvres. There was no drastic manoeuvres. Everybody knew what they had to do. And look at that penalty shootout as an example of this. Use that penalty shootout as a microcosm for who Arsenal are. All four penalties sent Diogo Costa the wrong way. David Raya saved two, should have probably saved, or could have, you shouldn't ever have to save a penalty, but certainly could have saved a third. It shows you the value of the homework. It shows you the diligence that Arsenal are putting in. It shows you the meticulous nature, and they are reaping the rewards for it. So the point I'm making here is, Arsenal should dream. Like, if... We conclude that Arsenal were the best team in the country. And I think certainly on form, Arsenal are the best team in the country. In fact, it's non-negotiable. They're top of the league, aren't they? Top of the league on goal difference. So Arsenal, by extension of the fact that they are top of the league on goal difference, in mid-March, being top of the Premier League makes you one of the best teams in Europe. Think about the competition left in the Champions League. By the same logic, the best team in Germany 
isn't even in the competition. So that does them a massive favour. One of the best teams in this country isn't in the Champions League. I'm obviously referring to Liverpool. So, yes, obviously, there are some brilliant teams left in the competition. But the question I would ask is, why not? Like, why not? Why does, it, why does it not happen for Arsenal? Like, the Premier League, maybe. The Champions League, maybe. Both, maybe. None, of course, maybe. Could easily end up with nothing. But I do think that there's a chance that they could do it. Yes, of course, there are plenty of really good teams left in the Champions League. Teams who know what it's about. Teams with the nous and the know-how and the acumen and the guile and the experience of what it takes to win the Champions League. But remember, the European Cup final this year is at Wembley. It's in Arsenal's city. It's in the city in which they play. It's in, in fact, a stadium where Arsenal used to play their home Champions League games. Gabriel Batistuta and all that. So there is certainly a reason to believe that they could do it. They're certainly a good enough team to do it. And look, they're going to have to ride their luck. But they're doing that. They're going to have to show some brilliant form. But they are also doing that. And unlike Arsenal, this is the most important thing. Last night, Brentford, this entire calendar year, in fact, Arsenal have been displaying a, a huge character. Like playing Porto at home in those circumstances really did put that character to the test. You know, there was an expectation, I think, that Arsenal should have won that game at a canter. And dealing with that level of expectation is also very difficult. But Arsenal came through it. They were resilient and they found a way. And I really do think that the mistake that Arsenal fans could make, the mistake that Arsenal could make themselves, is to potentially prioritise. To prioritise one thing or the other. But I'm not suggesting for one second that they prioritise the European Cup over the league. I think if you ask most Arsenal fans what they would rather win, they haven't won the Premier League for 20 years. They'd probably say the, the Premier League. You know, the Premier League is the point, isn't it? Your domestic campaign is the point. Don't get me wrong, there is a glamour and a beauty and a glory to European success, but I think Arsenal need a Premier League title. They also need a European Cup, but I think if they were to prioritise, they need a Premier League title. So I'm not suggesting that they prioritise. What I am suggesting that they do is go for the jugular of both. Because then, if you fall short on one, you probably come up with the other one. What about Liverpool? When was that? 2019, when they went to the Wanda Metropolitano. They could have won the league that year. They probably should have won the league that year. It was amazing that they didn't win the league that year. But they didn't. They watched Manchester City lift the Premier League title. They got so close. Didn't go their way. Next week, they win the European Cup. You know, dispatching Tottenham. And thank you, Liverpool, for that. I will be forever grateful for you doing that. But imagine if Liverpool hadn't done that. Imagine if Liverpool had... They were losing in Barcelona. They were losing in the new Camp, weren't they? They were getting battered. 3-0 down. Imagine if they'd gone, do you know what? Forget that. Let's focus. Focus on the, on the Premier League campaign. They would have more than likely ended up with nothing. And I just think that this Arsenal team is good enough, capable enough, playing well enough, has a belief. There is no reason why this Arsenal team shouldn't at least dream of winning the Champions League. As well as the Europe, as well as the Premier League, could there be a double? Um, I desperately hope none of this happens. By the way, I desperately hope. My my dream is that in the next round of the Champions League, I think we need Arsenal to draw Bayern. I just believe that Harry Kane scores home and away against Bayern Munich, and uh, sorry, against Arsenal. He certainly scores in London. I believe he scores over in the Allianz, and he'll be doing that celebration, and we can alleviate ourselves of a fear that Arsenal actually do this double. But who knows? I just think that there, there should be a belief. There should be a dream. There should be a, at least that ambition. Let me know what you think. Do you think this Arsenal team are capable of both? They're certainly capable of one, aren't they? Hopefully they end up with none. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day.